Hello everyone and welcome. In this video brought to you by Autotempest.com, we're going to be looking at everything wrong with my brand new, it's just got 22 miles on it, Tesla Model 3. Now Autotempest is an awesome website if anyone's interested in looking at buying a car. They take all the major used car sites and pile the search results all in one spot. I've got a link in the video description for you to check out and I'll talk about this more at the end of the video. Now before we get started I want to reiterate that this is the exact condition that this vehicle arrived in. I've got the delivery statement right here, uh, which it got put on a truck on November 28th, 2018. I ordered it on November 27th. It arrived November 29th. So it literally just took two days from when I clicked buy this car to when it arrived at my house. Uh, pretty crazy on the timing there. Uh, but regardless, this statement shows, I, you know, I blocked out some of the important information about my address and things like that. Uh, but it shows that the original odometer reading was 21.7 miles or 22 miles. I literally just took the car from the delivery truck and put it into my garage. So it has accumulated zero miles straight from the delivery truck into my garage. And then I'm making this video to show you the exact condition that it arrived in. As you can see, looking at the odometer, it still has 22 miles, and I'm filming this before the video that was already released, uh, going into the review of the car. If you wanna check that out, I'll include a link in the video description. So, issues with the Model 3. Now, it's been heavily reported on that there have been manufacturing quality issues with the Model 3s coming out. Uh, Tesla's trying to ramp up their production, and in doing so, you know, some quality issues are coming through. And, you know, it's not my goal here to say that, you know, Tesla's the worst company ever, or Tesla's the greatest company ever. Uh, I'm gonna try to remain as as objective as possible. I know the comments are probably going to range from, wow, I can't believe Tesla put out such a garbage product, to Jason, you're a garbage person. I can't believe you complained about such petty things. Uh, so my goal isn't to force an opinion on you. My goal is to simply show you the issues with this car and you can generate that opinion on your own. You know, does a car of this cost, does a car uh, like this, should it be coming out with these quality issues? You know, keep in mind uh, when I start talking about the paint, this is a $2,500 paint option, uh, the red color. And so, you know, does that make sense? Are, are the quality issues that I'm seeing in the paint, does that correlate with a $2,500 paint job option? So, you know, you can form the opinions. My goal is to simply show you all of the little defects with the core. And then you can let me know, you know, do you think that's normal? Do you think it's okay? Is it unacceptable? Uh, and also I'd be very curious to know if there are any other Tesla Model 3 owners out there, if the condition that your car arrived in was similar. Okay, so we're going to start with the exterior of the vehicle, looking at the paint scratches on it, then we'll get into paint defects. Uh, then we'll start looking at the body panels, panel gaps, that kind of thing. I've got some plastic calipers right here to help do some measurements. And where it's applicable, I'm also going to try and show a similar measurement on my Subaru Crosstrek, just so you can kind of have a comparative, uh, you know, a different car to compare and look at and say, you know, is this normal? Is this not normal? Again, trying to be as objective as possible here and just showing what, how the car arrived exactly as it is right now, coming straight off the delivery truck. Now, one of the worst areas is the rear door. Door. So this is the driver's side rear door, the very front of it. So this is our driver's door right here. And then this is the rear door on the driver's side. And as you can see, there's all these little etches cut out of the paint here and it actually continues along as you go along down the door. Uh, this is the worst spot of, you know, multiple of them all in one area. But you can see these little etches here where, you know, it's kind of been chipped through the paint and there's a bunch of them all across the door here. Now I learned a cool tip from Chris Fix to determine whether or not a scratch is actually through the clear coat. So I've got my Chris Fix thing going on right here. I've got some water, uh, sorry, I should say water. And so what you do is you simply spray water onto the scratches and if they disappear, then it's just in the clear coat. But if you spray the water on the scratches and you can still see the scratches, the scratches have gone through the clear coat and they're actually scratching the paint. Okay, so now applying that logic to our first set of scratches, spraying some water on it. And as you can see, you can still see those little metal scratches. So it is indeed through the clear coat. Moving towards the back of that same door, here you can see another scratch which has gone all the way through the clear coat. Continuing along to the back of the vehicle, we have yet another scratch. This is on the rear quarter panel, still on the driver's side. And this is once again through the clear coat entirely. 
Now as we keep moving along, so here we can see the scratch that we were just looking at in the top left of the screen. This is that rear driver's side quarter panel, and then we're moving on to the rear bumper right here. So here you can see additional scratches, uh, some light scuffing there, and an additional scratch down there below. So you know, just in this small little area, one, two, three uh, decent scratches there. Okay, so now we're looking at the rear bumper, and so here's one of the parking sensors, and there's a scratch that kind of goes along a good distance here along that bumper. So you can see, you know, some different areas like right here, an additional area right here where it's scraped, and then as you keep moving along, that scratch continues, uh, and you've got an additional scrape over here. Uh, so a good long scrape coming from this parking sensor here, and then going across. So as far as scratches, that mostly covers it. You know, there's a few other little minor scuffs and things around the vehicle, uh, but really most of it's all on the driver's side. The right side of the vehicle is actually quite good. Uh, no little scrapes or anything like that. And you know, just a few other additional little minor scrapes that I didn't show on the driver's side. Uh, but overall, you know, those main scratches all on that rear bumper, uh, the rear quarter panel, and then on that passenger, that rear door on the driver's side. Now, as far as defects in the paint, this little dot right here is actually underneath the clear coat. So this is a speck of dust probably. And what this just means is that in their paint room, you know, they had a little speck of dust floating around, it landed on the car, and then they applied that clear coat over it. And so it's kind of just a sign that, you know, perhaps the room where these are getting painted in uh, aren't being perfectly filtered. You've got some dust floating around in there. And unfortunately, one of those little pieces of dust got stuck underneath the clear coat. So so, you know, you can rub your finger on this. You can actually feel it, uh, the surface. There's a little bump right there. And this is just trapped underneath that clear coat. Now, people love talking about orange peel. So here you can see kind of the textured surface of the paint when you're looking at the reflection of the light. You know, instead of it being a smooth line where that light is reflected, instead it's kind of got that jaggedness, that uh, textured look to it, that orange peel. Now here you can get a much better idea of what I'm talking about. So we're looking at the lights on the ceiling of my garage being reflected off of the rear quarter panel. And you know, as I pan this camera down, uh, you can see that textured appearance to the paint. Next, we are going to talk about panel gaps. Now, the internet loves talking about panel gaps. Personally, I've never looked at a car and thought, whoa, look at those panel gaps, that's crazy. Uh, but you know, I'm wearing a hoodie, I'm clearly not a man of style or taste, so what do I know? So let's just look at the car, look at the numbers, see how the Tesla does. So the first gap we're looking at here is the front hood. And so we're looking at the driver's side here, the left side of the vehicle, and it looks to be a gap of about 4.4 millimeters there on the right side of the hood. Looking at the passenger side of the hood, it is very visibly thinner than on the driver's side. This looks to be about maybe 2.4 millimeters wide, this gap on this side, so about two millimeters less than on the driver's side. Now for comparison, I did the exact same measurements on the hood of my Subaru Crosstrek. On the driver's side, it was a gap of 3.8 millimeters, and then on the passenger side, it was a gap of 3.0 millimeters. Now one of the largest gaps on the vehicle is here between the rear quarter panel and the driver's side rear door. And so here you can see this gap is about 6.8 millimeters on the left side of the car. And then on the right side, quite a bit less gap here. So looking at about 4.8 millimeters, so about a two millimeter difference between the left and right sides. I also took these same measurements on my Subaru Crosstrek, 4.9 millimeters on the left side of the vehicle, 4.5 millimeters behind that door on the right side of the vehicle at this same portion on the upper portion of the door. Okay, so the next measurements we're looking at are the door gaps. So we're gonna start on this ridge right here, uh, and then we're gonna look at the front of the door, the gap right there, the gap between the two doors right there, moving along this same line, and then the gap behind the doors. So on the Tesla, on this driver's side right here, we've got 2.8 millimeter gap right here. We've got a 4.1 millimeter gap right here, and then a 5.6 millimeter gap at the back. Now on the other side of the vehicle, we're at 2.9 millimeters at the front, 2.9 millimeters in the middle, so a bit more consistent, and then 5.3 millimeters in the back. Now, once again, I did the same measurements on my Subaru Crosstrek. So on the driver's side, it was at four millimeters, in the middle, 4.2 millimeters, and then at the back, 4.5 millimeters. 
Then on the right side of the vehicle, four millimeters up front, same as on the other side, 4.5 in the middle, and then 3.9 in the back. So the biggest difference in any of the measurements on one side of the Subaru Crosstrek was 0.6 millimeters, but also the biggest difference left and right on the Subaru Crosstrek uh, was 0.6 millimeters. So on the Tesla, you know, perhaps it is a design thing that the back gap is the largest. But that said, the biggest difference in gap on any one individual side was 2.8 millimeters. And then between the left and the right side, where it was just 0.6 for the Subaru Crosstrek, it is 1.2 millimeters for this center one right here. So 4.1 on this driver's side, and then 2.9 millimeters on the passenger side. As far as the trunk, 5.4 millimeters here on the left, and then four millimeters here on the right. And that gap extends all the way up. So, you know, it's got a larger gap coming up all the way here and then extending up along this pillar. Now, once again, I took these same measurements on my Subaru Crosstrek. On the left side of the trunk, the gap was 3.7 millimeters. And then on the right side of the trunk, it was 4.7 millimeters. So a one millimeter difference on the Crosstrek, 1.4 here on the Tesla. But wait, there's still more gaps to measure. So here, looking at the roof of the car, this is the rear glass, and then this is the middle piece of glass. So measuring the gap there on this side of the vehicle, you can see about 2.9, maybe three millimeters gap there on this side of the vehicle. On the right side of the vehicle, we get that measurement and we're at about 4.7 millimeters. So 1.8 millimeter difference between the right and left sides of the glass as it comes to the edge here on this side, the right side of the vehicle versus on the left side of the car. Now here you can see the transition between the middle piece of glass and then that rear piece of glass on the roof of the car. So you can see that significantly larger gap for that middle panel of glass. And then as you get back, that gap gets quite a bit more narrow for the rear panel of glass. Now they did do a good job with the side frame finishing. So this all actually lines up pretty good uh, right here, you know, coming across there, everything's parallel in the same uh, plane orientation there. So that looks good, looks good right here as well. Uh, and you know, interesting little fact, I don't know if you guys have watched my Rolls Royce Cullinan review. One of the things they were talking about was having that really long side frame finishing that comes all the way around and then back. And they were saying that's very challenging to do, uh, to have that part where it does come back. And interesting to see, you know, here on the Tesla, they've actually cut it into two sections because it's a challenging uh, supplier demand to say you have to do all of this in one piece. You know, I'm not suggesting that this should have the same level of build quality as a Rolls Royce, something that costs eight times as much, uh, but just an interesting thing there to point out on that side frame finishing, having it cut into two different sections there, and they did do a nice job of having it all line up. Now, another interesting thing to look at as far as the panels and how they're assembled together, it's one thing to look at them, you know, left or right, how do they line up, what are the gaps between them, but then you can also look at height differences in them. And this is a bit more challenging to show on video, but looking at the front of the bumper right here, it's pretty much flush along this right side of the car. And then as you start moving across, the bumper here is actually raised up above this hood. So you kind of have a drop going across there versus on this side, it's a smooth transition across here. You kind of run into that bumper there as you're moving along down it versus on this side, you just come straight across it. And there are more examples of this as you go around the car. I'm not gonna go around and touch every single panel and show it in this video, uh, but just another example here. So on the driver's side, you've got a bit of a difference here on the door. So the door is a bit raised above versus this front quarter panel. And on the passenger side of the vehicle, it's pretty much flush the entire way from the top to bottom. Whereas on this driver's side, this door is higher than right here. There's a little bit of an elevation difference right there. And then as you get towards the bottom of it, actually this front quarter panel is a little bit raised up and the door is a bit recessed there at the bottom. So it kind of has this warped uh, angle to it for the door here versus on the other side of the vehicle, it's just kind of a nice smooth all the way down. Now, am I human garbage for pointing out these small flaws or are they actually legitimate reasons to be concerned? That's uh, for you to decide. You know, I'm just trying to show you the condition in which this car arrived into my garage, you know, straight off the truck into my garage. This is how it arrived to me. Whether or not you feel that's acceptable is for you to decide. I'd love to hear your opinions about it in the comments. Also in Tesla's defense, I did send them several video clips showing the different scratches on the car and they said they will get it all fixed up. Uh, they said they'd be contacting me about getting service to fix it all up. 
and they even said they would be providing me a loaner vehicle while the vehicle is getting fixed. So on their end, you know, they were happy to say, you know what, yes, there's a few flaws with it, we will fix that up, don't worry about it, we'll get you covered. So I do appreciate that on Tesla's end, that they were very quick to respond and say, yes, we will do this. That said, of course, it would be ideal to just not have those defects in the first place. Now, a huge thank you to Autotempest.com for sponsoring this video. I thought it'd be pretty interesting to see, you know, what is the cheapest electric car I could find used on Autotempest.com. So the first vehicle I looked at was the Smart 4.2 electric. I found a 2013 for just $5,000 with only 5,000 miles on it, uh, but we can probably do better than that. So I looked up a Mitsubishi iMeve uh, 2012 with 25,000 miles on it, also under $5,000, uh, but still not as low as what I was hoping I could find. So then I searched for a Nissan Leaf. This thing's been out for quite a while and found a 2011 Nissan Leaf SL with 65,000 miles on it for under $4,000. Anyways, Autotempest.com is an awesome place to search for used vehicles, and I will include a link in the video description. So thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.